Okay, I'd like to go ahead and call uh, this meeting to order of the Yuba City City Council. Um, I have some uh, information to read regarding our virtual information. The governor has declared a state of emergency to exist in California as a result of the threat of COVID-19. The governor also issued executive order N-33-20, which directs Californians to follow public health directives, including canceling large gatherings. The executive order also allows local legislative bodies to hold meetings via conference calls while still meeting state transparency requirements. Public health and well-being are top priority for the city of Yuba City, and you are urged to take all appropriate <coughs> health safety precautions. How to participate in this virtual meeting. This meeting is utilizing Zoom application for this live broadcast. For this meeting, we will be using the questions and answers functionality of this tool in order to accommodate public comment. On your device, the question and answer section of the app is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. For those that would like to comment during this meeting, please enter your comment into the question and answers portion of the app and be sure to state the item you will be commenting on. During the public comment of each item, staff will read aloud the comments provided by the public for all to hear for that specific item. Be timely with your questions as once the public hearing is closed or the item has been discussed by the council and voted on, no more comments will be accepted for that item. May I have roll call please? Mayor Boomgarden? Here. Vice Mayor Shaw? Here. Council Member Espindola? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Kirchner? Here. All right. Um, please rise. So we'll have the invocation by the Vice Mayor, please. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for your goodness and your graciousness. We pray that you'll give us clarity and wisdom in all decisions that come before us and, and the path for the city going forward. And in all that, we give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moody, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, next item for consideration is the agenda modification. Um, any modifications to the agenda? Seeing none, so we'll go ahead and uh, move on with the agenda as approved. Mr. Mayor? I forgot to do the city attorney's report on closed session items. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There were no reportable action taken in closed session. However, I believe there was one recusal. Correct. Uh, I, um, the mayor, myself, and I uh, recused myself on item B. All right. COVID nineteen. Uh, item one. COVID nineteen. Discussion and action on measures to mitigate the impacts of the COVID nineteen coronavirus, <coughs> coronavirus pandemic. This will be presented by Diana Langley, our interim city manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So, not much to update tonight. We continue to be in the purple tier. Um, I will note that uh, Steve Smith, the CEO for Sutter County, did provide today that um, both counties have uh, immunized or provided the vaccination for about 60% of the 65 plus population. And so um, they're really encouraging getting those that are 65 and older to sign up to receive the vaccine. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions related to city operations or any other items. Any questions from the council? Seeing none, right, thank, thank you. you for your report. Uh, item number three is public communication, appearance of interested citizens. Uh, due to COVID-19, residents are encouraged to attend the city council meeting via web conference or submit comments by mail or show up in person. Consistent with public health guidelines for social distancing, limited seating is available in the council chamber. If an attendee does not have a facial covering, one can be provided. Comments may be made either at the council chamber podium Please participate via web conference or email if you are ill or have been exposed to COVID-19. Uh, do we have any comments from the public on this item from the audience? Mayor? Yes, sir. Was it your intent to also combine this with item number one, the discussion of the public comments on the coronavirus pandemic? In other words, public comment for both of them? It was. Thank you. Thank you. Did we have any public comments on the coronavirus? No public comment. Awesome, thank you. Do we have any public comments on the appearance of interested citizens item? No public comment. Even more awesome, thank you. 
Consent calendar. Do I have any public? No. Uh, all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and can be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time that the council votes on the motion unless members of the city council, staff, or public request specific items to be discussed or removed from the consent calendar for individual action. Would anyone from the public like to speak on these items? Anybody on the email? No public comment. All right. Council, any items to be discussed or removed for discussion on the consent calendar? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent calendar items. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Espindola, second by Vice Mayor Shaw. Uh, because this is Zoom, we need to have a roll call vote, please. Council Member Espindola? Yes. Vice Mayor Shaw? Aye. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Kirchner? Yes. Mayor Boomgarden? Yes. The consent calendar is approved unanimously. Thank you. Business items. Uh, item number 12, accept grant funding and expenditure recommendations for the California Citizens Option for Public Safety COPS grant of 100,000. This will end up in a public hearing presentation by our police chief, Rob Landon. Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak to you this evening. The subject is exactly what the mayor just said, to accept grant funding and expenditure recommendations for the California Citizens Option for Public Safety, which is a COPS grant. It comes about once a year, depending on uh, state funding. And this year, our dollar amount, I believe, is just announced at $107,000. So our recommendation is to conduct the public hearing and after consideration, adopt the resolution, authorize the finance director to make a supplemental budget appropriation as necessary. And it's a fiscal impact is $100,000 with no matching fund. And I apologize for not having a PowerPoint. Each year, dependent upon state budget priorities, funds may be allocated to law enforcement agencies to assist in carrying out priorities as established by the chief of police or the sheriff in unincorporated areas or contract cities. Over the last several years, monies have been made available through the state of California to local law enforcement entities in the forms of the COPS grant. This year, we have approximately $107,000. The police department has traditionally utilized funding obtained in this grant for major approval expenditure category of technology advancement, critical patrol safety equipment, and infrastructure improvements for the benefit of frontline law enforcement delivery to the citizens of our community. Funding directions are based upon needs assessments from the department's management group in consultation with the rank and file employees and input from the city's IT staff and our research and development unit, which is one person. Prior year's expenditures have been for such items as uh, radio upgrades, emergency operations center retrofits for the police department, total service weapons upgrade for all officers, and that's been about 20 years for that, equipping all patrol vehicles with mobile data terminals integrated with the police communications center, and then required upgrades in the fire police computer aided dispatch system. So we would suggest a continuation along this path of technology evaluation and implementation. I wrote this and I put that word in there. Along with some much needed patrol staffing equipment upgrades, which has served us very well over the last 20 years. The department recommends making the following purchases. And just so you understand, the way that we do the uh, COPS process at the police department is we go to every single unit and we ask them to make recommendations for what they feel that we should have in the next upcoming budget. And then based on that, we have a couple of meetings and this, they present the list at the end of the day as close to $100,000 as possible. So for this year, patrol related, and they all have to be frontline law enforcement needs. You can't have it to supplant um, prior expenditures or future budget items. So patrol related items, um, we're asking for 30 Glock 17 pistols, which will replace the remaining 40 caliber pistols. We're trying to get everybody again to shoot the same type of weapon. It's easier for training. It's easier during emergencies. Um, nine millimeters are now a more popular weapon. More um, FBI uh, data has been accumulated, and they feel like, based on that, it's a cheaper ammunition to shoot, and it's as effective as the 40 caliber as well without penetrating through outer walls and stuff. So there's been a lot of research, and we agree with the research, and we would like to do that at a cost of $15,000. By doing that, we're replacing the old 40 calibers, and we will um, put those out 
to sell at the place where we buy the nine millimeters as we have in the past, but there's not a lot of return on those because they are a couple generations old. We'd also like to get go bags for each patrol vehicle equipped with basic medical supplies and additional weapon magazines in the event of a mass critical event. We've seen that in the past where the need has arisen. Um, we've actually experienced that at the police department where officer was shot and the, uh, having the go bag there to stop the bleeding and, and put a tourniquet on them potentially and probably save their life. Too many drones and training for two additional personnel. Drones have been utilized on patrol to help apprehend fleeing suspects safely and can be used during search and rescue operations, and that's at a cost of $3,000. I really high, highly recommend the drones. Um, I am not intimately familiar with those, but this past week we had a SWAT call out that ended up with a canine um, apprehension where the suspect was hiding in the backyard with multiple trailers, chicken coops, dog kennels, and all kinds of um, stuff back there that create a very dangerous environment to send our officers into. By placing the drone up in the air, we were able to figure out where the suspect narrow them down to certain locations. So it's very impactful, and we have used those on multiple calls. We actually had to use the Yuba County Sheriff's Department on that one, and I, I think they are very, um, very, very effective. Redman instructor suit and two uh, student Redman suits. So for those, and that's at a cost of $6,500. A Redman suit allows the officers to practice using force um, on a live person, but have that person suited up in a very padded um, uniform type equipment. So it's a lot, it, it teaches you how to do it in a practical environment because obviously just hitting a um, a dummy or hitting a pole or something like that isn't as effective as actually seeing a person when they're moving and avoiding the areas that they don't want to hit and making sure they're hitting the areas that they're supposed to be hitting. So that's something that we are in dire need of our old one. Unfortunately, they do take a beating and they uh, were running out of duct tape. Technology. Oh, the other thing for patrol is license plate readers. Now we've asked for these in the past and because of the ongoing costs, we haven't been able to fully be able to utilize those. This year, um, we've seen what Sutter County is doing with theirs, and three license plate readers in one year of service would allow the department to strategically place cameras in high traffic areas to assist in locating vehicles that are stolen or wanted in connection with serious felony crimes. That's at a cost of $25,000. And I think um, based on our area's level of uh, stolen vehicles, this is one, it, equipment or tool that we can put in our bag to help us effectively combat that because it'll automatically search through thousands and thousands of things that an officer couldn't possibly do. Technology, um, we'd like to buy a new throw phone system for the hostage negotiations team to utilize during critical events. So what a hostage um, throw phone is, is basically a lot of times um, people cell phones die, so in a critical event like a SWAT call out, they're inside of a house, we have no way of communicating them absent a bullhorn, so we're not getting that effective communication with the person. We can place the throw phone inside the house or close enough for the suspect to pull it out and be able to negotiate with them. What this does without giving away too much of the uh, technology and the, um, the uses that we will have with it, it has video cameras and it allows us to capture the event as it's happening real time. So that's at a cost of twenty. $8,000. We do have one of those. It does not have the same capability. And with all the liability and um, in our current environment, we would like to have something like that to record, document, and also to be a helpful tool for the, for the officers. Specifically for SWAT, we're asking for two set of night vision optics and accompanying laser optics. This enhances the ability for the officers to operate in no or low light situations. And two sets of binoculars for SWAT sniper team. The current being utilized out of date and in need of replacement at a cost of $1,500. And sniper is not the same as a military type term. We use a lot of that for scouting and advanced scouting and placing them in a position of advantage from a far location. So the better optics they have, the more effective they can communicate back to the officers that are up close and personal. And finally, the last item we're looking for is purchase of five iPhones and hard mount cases for traffic officers. These will be mounted to the motorcycle and give traffic officers the ability to see the computer-aided dispatch call screen. This will also give them use of a, a phone to mark body camera videos in the field, saving them time from going through videos at the end of the shift, and it also helps for the racial profiling identification that we're going to have to start using at the beginning of this year so the officer doesn't have to go to a set location for 15 minutes to input all the data. It allows them to do it on scene. Um, 
The computer-aided dispatch is very important for traffic. It's the big disadvantage of being a motor unit is you don't have a computer to see where everybody's at while you're out in the field. This allows them that ability. Well, also to be able to check um, driver's license and license plates without consistently uh, talking to dispatch and tying up the radios. So that total comes out to about $98,700, and any remaining money can be used as a contingency since these are approximate numbers and not based on competitive bids at this time. The fiscal impact is $100,000. The alternative is to provide staff with alternative spending paths, which will not supplant routine expenditures in the general fund. And with that, uh, the recommendations are to conduct a public hearing and after consideration, adopt a resolution authorizing the Chief of Police to accept the fiscal year 2020-2021 California Citizen Options for Public Safety Grant and approve expenditures and authorize the Chief Financial Officer to make budget adjustments as necessary. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions you may have, Mayor or Council. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief Landon? Seeing none, go ahead and open a public hearing public hearing on California citizens option for public safety grant funding and expenditure recommendations in the amount of hundred thousand dollars is now open if there are any members of the public who would like to address the council on this issue please provide your statement via public comment and state your name and address for the record do we have any comments from the public on this item seeing none in the audience we'll wait a second here no public comment. Okay. Um, I do have a quick question. Since you said the new amount is 107, should we amend this for the 107 instead of the 100 so that he has authorization to spend the 107,000? You have authority to discuss and take action on that tonight, but Chief, was it 107 or 98,700? So 98,700 is the dollar amount that we came up with. In looking through, because it, it it does tend to change sometimes, I looked at it today and the dollar amount was 107,000. It's built on a percentage. So the actual cops for the city of Yuba City is 100,000. 107, I'm sorry. So city council, if you need to amend it to be 107,000, that's within the action item tonight. We would just adopt the resolutions and just change that number to 107,000. And this Mrs. Wakefield and I can work and make that on the back end, clean it up on the back end. Okay. So no more public comment. Just check in one more time, Sarah, in case something came in on the email. No public comment. All right. So we'll go ahead and close public hearing, bring the matter back to the council for comments or a motion. A comment, if I may. Please. Uh, just a comment. Good, very good job. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. All those toys you get, you know, me, me able to get that into $100,000, all that good stuff, is it's going to be good and keep our people much safer so good job on that thank you council i'll be looking forward to it too if i <laughs> we will gladly um invite you guys if you want to come to a uh, defensive tactical defensive tactics day we're always looking for volunteers <laughs> she looks good in red through, through, through the mayor i have a go ahead please can we i actually you know that might not be a bad idea i think it's a great idea Yeah, councilman are you in for the, the well, i'm in to watch the I think it's a the, plastic. The, the, the idea of doing, I was just interested in the uh, the technology that you mentioned um, for the license. What is can you, the license? What is that? The license plate reader. Yeah. The automated license yeah. plate reader. So. Oh, you're getting into technology. The, I just like technology. I really en enjoy that. So is that, is that car mounted or a fixed? A fixed location. Fixed one. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Are, are we disclosing the? Fix locations? No, but they will be high traffic areas. And unless you're driving a stolen car or something in a felony, you have nothing to worry about. Oh, okay. Just just, <laughs> just wondering. Um, because I do hear a lot of fast cars drive, man. It's like crazy sometimes. But So the actual camera takes a pictures of thousands and thousands of license and then identifies stolen potential ones. And that's is that kind of in a summary of the way? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Very good. All right, thank you. Through the mayor. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, you mentioned um, we had to use Yuba County's uh, drone. Yes. Is that because? Well, it, it, it was a strategic uh, call that theirs was more available at the time. They had an operator ready, and he just happened to be part of the uh, SWAT, um, their SWAT team. We have a combined multi-jurisdictional SWAT team with Yuba County. 
So he was just there and he had his in case and it was ready to go. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, through the Mayor, Chief, love all the ideas. Uh, anything to help keep our officers safe, let them do their job better and keep our citizens, I am all behind. So thank you for that. The only question I would have is if, if they dress in red, can we go back to the Old West and you swear me in for the day? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I don't need to add anything other than I think this is a great opportunity for us to continue to provide our officers with things that are going to make them and the public more safe. So I appreciate the, the work of you and your staff in pursuing this and being successful. I know it's not competitive, but you still have to do the work. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mayor. Council. Through the Mayor. Please. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the Chief of Police to accept the physical year 2020-2021 California Citizens option for public safety cops funding and approve expenditure recommendations with the amendment that the grant is 107,000. And then likewise, they authorize the finance director to make a supplemental budget appropriation for the grant expenditures to 100-43117 and grant expenditures to 2180-69201. Second. All right, I have a motion by the vice mayor and a second by council member Shaw. Uh, roll call vote, please. It's okay. The second was so, Harris, correct? Harris. What did I say? Shaw? Shaw. It could be one of okay. the. John, Shaw. What, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Vice Mayor Shaw? Aye. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Espindola? I think I need to go back to virtual land. <laughs> yes. Council Member Kirchner? Yes. Mayor Boomgarden? Yes. If I may, before you continue, yes, please, um, Brian, I got a text from a constituent saying the Zoom link is a problem. I don't know what else to. I just put it in on you. You're, you're good. Okay, I just wanted to pass that on. If somebody's not having them, it could be operator error, but at the moment we. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Council. All right. We'll move to item 13, which is the Sutter Bike Path Gap Closure Design Award. This is going to be presented by our interim city manager, Diana Langley. Good evening. So the project includes the extension of the Sutter Bike Path from its current terminus at Hooper Road east to Harder Parkway, which would be the future Harder Park, and then also a shared path on the west side of Harder Parkway from Butte House Road to Highway 20. And so the Public Works Department um, has been working to extend the path. Um, the crop project will create more opportunities for recreation, exercise, and shopping. And in June 2019, the city received a $150,000 grant um, for, through the Active Transportation Program. So the city issued a request for proposals and received three proposals. Uh, the proposals were ranked using the criteria shown and all consultants were highly qualified. It's just that Dock and Engineering was ranked the highest unanimously with a score of 91 out of 100. Um, the reason that Dawkins proposal ranked the highest is because of um, their ability to work with Caltrans. They, they demonstrated that with the Fistry Bridge project. Also, um, they, their proposal went into a lot of analysis of potential issues, and you could tell that they really put a lot of thought into the specific project. And then also, their quality control officer is a daily bike commuter and league certified cycling instructor, and we felt could provide an element to this project um, that would be special to the design team. So the fiscal impact, the total contract amount is $182,652.01. Again, the grant of 153,000 through the State Active Transportation Fund, and then local match of $29,652.01, of which there's funding available in the Capital Improvement Program account. And so the recommendation is to adopt a resolution awarding a contract to Dock and Engineering in the amount of $182,652.01, subject to material terms, with the finding that it is in the best interest of the city. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ms. Langley? Do we have any comments from the public? No public comment. Okay. 
with that, entertain a motion on this item. I move to adopt the resolution awarding the professional service agreement to Duncan. Is that how you say it? Duncan um, Engineering of Folsom for the Sutter uh, Bike Path Gap Closure, preliminary engineering services in the amount of 182,652.01. It's interesting that we have one cent on that. Subject to material terms with the findings that is the best interest of the city. Um, and we selected him because he rides his bike. I want to know if he rides the bike in Yuba City because it's pretty dangerous riding your bike in Yuba City. So I hope they make it safer for all of us. Those are added comments, Mayor. Second. All right, I have a <clears throat> motion which was seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Council Member Espinola? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Councilmember Kirchner? Yes. Vice Mayor Shaw? Aye. Mayor Boomgarden? Yes. All right. Future agenda items. This opportunity to discuss the city manager about items that came up in the meeting this evening that you would like to have brought back to the council at a later date. Are there any other comments relating to the agenda items that may have come in during the meeting? Sarah? No public comment. Okay, from my fellow council members, anything that you would like to uh, look forward to on a future agenda? Seeing none. All right, we'll move to reports and communications. Following reports and communication items are provided for council's information. No action can be taken on these items under this section unless the council agrees to include it on a subsequent agenda. We will start off with council member Espindola, please. Thank you, Mayor. It's really nice to be here in person with all of you. So um, it's um, good to, to be in, in the room together. Uh, with the Bi-County Homeless and the JPA, um, we haven't had a meeting. Um, but I did talk to Diana, and one of the things about that is um, reaching out with um, Sutter County CAO to get a better understanding of the fiscal impacts with um, the overnight camping areas uh, in the city. And um, as an ad hoc committee, um, we have not met in months. So perhaps there's a good opportunity to regroup as an ad hoc committee. Uh, the River Valley Air Quality Management District, my first meeting will be on the 22nd. So I'll be there for the first time on that. No meeting in the North Valley Integrated Regional. Uh, with the Regional Water Authority, um, our next meeting is March 11th. Uh, I did attend the Sutter Buttes flood control meeting, which there was quite a bit to cover um, in that particular meeting. And I'm gonna just go through a couple of the highlights to share with um, my colleagues in the community. Uh, so the Sutter County FEMA accreditation is in the process right now with uh, Sabuca and the coordination with Sutter County, which will then submit a 100-year accredited package for the Southern Feather River um, levy, which reaches FEMA in the fall. So that will help un with the insurance and, and the Sutter and, and the floodplains in the southern part of our area. Also, there's some work that is being done in Yuba City and Live Oak for the boat ramps um, and cleaning mitigation projects that are occurring. Um, one really um, big piece of potential great um, support for our levees, even though it's been dry this year, um, but we need to be prepared. Um, in November 2020, Sabuka submitted um, to Cal OES a notice of interest uh, for funding to implement critical repairs along the Sutter Bypass East Levy. And so this um, notice of interest has been approved by Cal OSHA. And Sabuka has been invited to submit a full application, which is due on March 5th. Um, and eligible um, sub-applicants, which are selected, will then be sent to FEMA and perhaps be um, funded by FEMA and eligible. Um, if we're not funded, we get on the list. And the actual project is for $32 million, a request for design, permitting, construction of levy improvements to the two to two of the three critical most sub-reaching uh, protecting areas of the Southern Basin. And then lastly on that one, um, Butte County Supervisor Kimmel Shu is the new chair. And by uh, mishap by my colleague, uh, 
Councilman Harris, I am now the vice chair of that committee as well. So thank you, Councilman Harris, for that. Um, so no other activities on my local assignments. Um, I did uh, participate, and I think we were all invited to a White House um, intergovernmental affairs meeting on the 4th of this month. Uh, the director of Julie um, Chavez Rodriguez was um, present on that. Former Ambassador Roberta J uh, Jacobson of the National Security Council of the Southern Border Policy. Taylor Morin of the Domestic Policy um, was part of that. And part of the um, areas that they were talking about on discussions of how um, work force and employment visas were discussed in particular um, because our region is a large agricultural base. So some of these decisions may impact um, our area. Ali Zadi, who is the White House Deputy National Climate Advisor was there. Um, there was discussion in reference to the water and infrastructure and the need for um, the emphasis that will be placed on cities and regions with a higher poverty and disadvantaged communities. Since Yuba City qualifies under some of these particular guidelines, um, and because we're an entitlement for CDBG funding. Um, so I submitted a question to Mr. Sahid in which I asked him of the question was, you know, is there, is cities have an, an opportunity for flexible funding to assist with expenses occurred due to COVID because of water? Um, we have put um, some of our consumers are not uh, able to pay for their um, water expense, or also for um, assisting with housing and businesses and future funding for infrastructure. And um, the answer was a high level re answer um, in reference to the American Rescue Plan. That is um, that there's funding set aside for situations like ours. And um, I hope to attend future meetings um, if invited again. So lastly, um, I do want to say that I want to do a special shout out to our um, Yuba City Fire Department. If you haven't seen the love video that they produced, it is so, it's really, really, and hey Chief, I, you're back there on the teams, um, Alexander. I, I know that um, your team did a really nice job and I just wanna publicly thank you for your work on that. And also the regional work that you've done with um, Alexandra, um, Mosadillo from Yuba County PIO Department helped put this together um, and supporting our regional support and collaboration work on hopefully making some headways here with um, COVID. And um, one major, 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 major thank you and gratitude, gratitude and thank you to Diana Langley. Um, you are such an exemplary leader, such a servant heart, genuinely care about the well-being of our city staff, our executive team, our community. Your family has been completely supportive. Um, and I thank your family for doing this for us for almost two years, Diana, almost two years. There's been gaps in those two years, but you have done this for us. And I cannot say how grateful I am to have work in this capacity with you for these last years. And it's a, a, a measure of character that I strive to be in your example. So thank you so much. And that also the work that you do with our executive team, they're so trustworthy with you. They work really hard, every single executive team Member Spencer, Natalie, Brad, Ben, our fire chief, Alexander, police chief Landon, they've worked so close with our team. And um, we couldn't have done as much as we've been able to do that because of our team and the executive. But with that, it also includes all the city employees, every single city employee, because without Sierra and Brian and Judy and all the legwork that is done to produce and put these meetings together for all of us, it could never have been done as well. Um, but it's been your leadership, Diana, that has moved us along. 
and with Shannon, our city attorney, being by your side in every way. And so I know we're transitioning into a new, um, a new era, I would call it, a new beginning or, an, or a new chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And Dave Vaughn is here with us, and I welcome the, the, the change, the, the opportunity, and I just wanted to um, thank you and give you the full recognition because it's really not the city council or myself that does the best work for the city. It is you, it's our executive team, it's the city employees, and the community benefits so much from that. And I just genuinely thank you so much for the work that you've done. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Harris. Yeah, thank you. Um, just recently, over the last couple of weeks, I met with, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the mayor and Diana, members of SACOG, and their um, consultant regarding a transportation study. SACOG is working for, to benefit uh, our regions. Our primary concern was uh, transportation related to commercial uh, areas of development, also uh, trucks. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to improve the way. Uh, goods and services are moved throughout the city, and so we had a good opportunity to discuss that. Um, <clears throat> also met with the mayor and members of the Regional Housing Authority. We primarily discussed pending and proposed Richland Village project, as well as the opportunities to enhance communication regard with, with RHA regarding future and current projects. I did have an opportunity also to go on a, a little ride along, if you will, with uh, their finance director, Mario Cruz, and Gus Becerra, of Regional Housing Authority, and they showed me probably half of the projects, um, current and pending, in in their sphere of influence, if you will. We did I did not have the time to get up to uh, Grass Valley or Live Oak or out in Calusa um, County area, but from what I did see, it was very interesting and eye opening. I, I it was a good benefit to put eyeballs on all those um, projects and have some uh, frank discussions with them. So I'd also recommend it from all my, my friends here to do the same thing. Um, and more to follow on all of that, um, RHA stuff and SACOG stuff as things progress. Uh, more on SACOG, the, I'm on the member of the Strategic Planning Committee. It was primarily a get to know you first meeting of the year for the new members. Um, continue with our focus on vibrant places, connected communities, and of course, economic prosperity. Um, so that, that meets uh, quarterly throughout the year basically just gives uh, focus to where we go on our blueprint for uh, progress. The SACOG land use and natural resource meeting, another, uh, you know, one of the first meetings of the year. So um, introductory all the way around to the new versus old members. Uh, one of the primary things we discussed was uh, part of that land use and natural resources and of course SACOG in general, we do the airport land use compatibility, and there's a study pending on that. This one what we discussed was regarding uh, Mather, future development in that area, Mather Air Force Base, or former Air Force Base. I had a meeting, the first meeting at the school district liaison. Diana did a really good job explaining the projects uh, we have going on in the city specific to things related to schools not the least of which were the two uh, items we, we recently talked about, improvements along Walton and also from the bike path south on Harder to Highway 20, um, both of which will assist and make things safer for kids getting to uh, school, one to River Valley and the other one down to Lincoln, and in some cases, um, was that AK there? So uh, the list goes on, roadway improvements, a lot of things going on in the city designed to um, not only benefit traffic, but pedestrians, and, and most importantly, of course, our children getting to and from school. So I'm looking forward to being a part of that um, committee as well. Um, and that is it. Thank you for having my back on Sabufka. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Kirchner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, since our last meeting, uh, something popped up on social media, and uh, that was the anniversary, uh, four-year anniversary of the uh, spillway uh, disaster up in Oroville, and it kind of put things into perspective for me. I was up there shortly after that happened and was given a tour, and uh, to think what it could have happened. Uh, I don't know if you've, anybody's been up there recently, but it's absolutely amazing uh, the difference uh, 
of what uh, what had happened to what it looks like now. So those uh, just seeing those uh, memories uh, pop up on uh, social media uh, made me appreciate um, how very fortunate we were that uh, the unthinkable didn't happen. Uh, the the one the one meeting uh, the one board meeting that wasn't canceled uh, this month was uh, uh, Yuba Center Mosquito Vector and I had a great opportunity to meet some uh, neat folks down there. Uh, one of the things that they've done recently is uh, they uh, got some surplus property that they're putting uh, selling at auction, including uh, three pickup trucks, some ATVs, and some other miscellaneous um, uh, items. Um, there's uh, progress on recruiting a vector, vector ecologist. They had two applications for that. And a vacant MCT position. They had 11 applica applications for that. Also, the vacant Yuba, uh, Yuba County trustee position was filled by a John Link. Um, other activities, they purchased three new trucks through uh, Giviki Ford at 24300 apiece. And those were a competitive, competitive bid. Uh, the uh, Gibbicky beat out the uh, bids from Sacramento, which was nice to hear. Something that has changed uh, in how they do business, is, recently in September, uh, they've moved from spraying the rice fields to spraying the orchards, which apparently, uh, to date, looks like it's working. And so they're, they're very opt optimist, optimistic about that. Uh, lastly, I'm really excited about this uh, this extension to our to our bike path, and looking forward to seeing everybody out there on it. And that's all I. What's that, <laughs> Mr. Mayor? For you, I can get one. And that's all I've got. Councilman Kushner, are you going to invite us to some sort of event? I'm going to be on the handlebars. Absolutely. The uh, Buttes, remember? We should, yeah. Well, uh, uh, and that's a, that's a great question. Um, unfortunately. What's happened? I've been, yeah. Um, usually this time of year, well, what is this, March? Usually, yeah, usually this time of year is when you start seeing all these ride not notice, notifications right. pop up because everybody, uh, every... Uh, Service Club has fundraisers, and Bike the Buttes is, an, uh, is one of those. Right. And I'm really hopeful that they're going to have it this year. Um, but to date, I haven't heard okay. anything. I know a lot of these uh, are going towards more of a kind of a virtual. Yeah. yeah. So I, the, the one, the, the, the big one in Chico, which usually is right around the same time as the, 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 the Buttes ride, has decided to go that route this year. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I hope to see everybody out there. I, I, I'm riding the bike. I'm doing it. Are our are, are, are colleagues doing it? Okay, just wondering. Get get the tricycles out. I mean the bicycle, sorry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'll just add on that bike, the only bike that you will find me on will have Screaming Eagle attached to it somewhere because uh, it's got a big engine under it. I'm seeing the thumbs up. So um, anyway, with that, Mr. Mayor, um, during the past couple of weeks, uh, my meetings are kind of crunched. Uh, I've got those coming up later this week, but uh, I did have the opportunity to meet with uh, GSEC and uh, look forward to picking up a few projects that uh, the former Mayor Harris was already working on with uh, GSEC and uh, reporting back here in the future. So bring more opportunities up here to our area. So that's good. Um, with that, I just want to echo the sentiments earlier. Ms. Langley, I said it uh, last meeting, you've definitely earned the title of Master Cat Herder because you have corralled everyone around for the past two years. Thank you. Uh, I think you'll find that sentiment across that uh, accolades and uh, you've been incredible. Thank you for your dedication, your service, uh, your leadership, your uh, humbleness, your insightfulness. I mean, need we say more? It's, it's been an honor to have you as, as uh, leading the E-team. And with that, uh, not quite here, but I am extremely encouraged uh, because he's not supposed to be here for another week. But uh, Mr. Vaughn, our new city manager, is with us, and that's dedication. That's hitting the ground running. I'm really looking forward to what uh, the future has before us. 
and uh, what you'll bring to the executive team and our city team. And uh, we just all need to rally together as a group and uh, propel this city forward because I think our greatest days are ahead of us yet. Uh, and uh, that's just because of the dedication I see across the board from all of our team members who work for the city. We've got some good days and good years ahead of us. So with that, I'll have more next time, Mr. Mayor. And uh, that concludes. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, it's been a pretty busy week for me uh, with city-related stuff. Uh, I do also want to acknowledge uh, Dave Vaughn's in the audience. Um, been working on his onboarding, which uh, I believe he began today. Uh, it's quite a full schedule as he he uh, begins to integrate himself into the city structure. And uh, so uh, welcome aboard. It's like, you know, they keep talking about drinking from a fire hose. I think this is probably like more like a big water main. I don't know that it's a fire hose. But, um, the meetings I attended, uh, Council Member... Harris, I got to make sure I get this right. And I uh, met with uh, Sutter County uh, supervisors, the chair, Dan Flores and Matt Conant. It's an intergovernmental relations committee, which its intent is to continue to work collaboratively uh, for things that are going on in Sutter County. I know one of the things that we chatted about, there was several, but one that was probably most important and one that we all had pr um, participated in in the past was was visiting a few of our, our local businesses and just checking in with them from both a Sutter County and a Yuba City aspect. Uh, more on that and further on down here. Uh, as Council Member Harris mentioned, we did meet with um, the staff of the Richland, or not Richland, the Regional Housing Authority. And I will tell you that uh, I'm not gonna go over what we discussed because um, Mr. Harris already has, but we will be coming back to this group uh, in regards to the Richland Village project. So we need to, to take that up again and figure out uh, what funding uh, the city is willing to participate in. And they've got some things they're getting together for us as well. I have invited uh, Mr. Becerra to come to present to the, to the council, uh, not in conjunction with an ask, but just uh, on what they're doing. Um, and he has agreed to do that. So we'll get him scheduled uh, down the road here. Uh, did, uh, Vice Mayor Shaw and I have um, participated in a meeting with uh, the Budget Ad Hoc Committee. And again, we owe some uh, information back to this council on that. We're working through some things. We've asked for some more clarifying information and, and Spencer and Diana and Lynn Hale have been uh, very gracious in, in providing that information, but we will be coming back to the council uh, with some budget, budget stuff here in the not too distant future. Uh, again, the SACOG meeting, with uh, Lon Hotamia's uh, consulting group and uh, James Corliss from SACOG. Exciting stuff. Uh, they have money, they're interested. We just have to give them uh, something to, to, to take a look at. And uh, there was a good discussion. This is a regional effort. So um, in regional, I don't necessarily mean that it's, it's something that's uh, uh, just you know, this huge region, but they're very interested in doing something up here in Yuba and Sutter counties as it relates to growing uh, business and economic development. And there's some exciting projects, I think, that we can bring to the table. Did meet with uh, the, the city manager and Mr. Phil Treanor, and uh, it was a good meeting. As you know, we have an issue with biosolids, uh, the disposal of such, and uh, Mr. Treanor has uh, presented and has perhaps an option for us to consider down the road uh, as we as we um, begin to deal with you know the long-term issue of you know, getting biosolids taken care of out of our uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, I do want to take a moment to um, and, and perhaps I'll, I'll lean on you, Diana, just to give a brief update on where we're at with the master tax exchange agreement. I know that you're um, involved with that, but I believe the council is probably interested in hearing where we're at. Yes, so the uh, the Bogue Stewart Master Plan Master Tax Exchange Agreement, the draft was provided to the county a couple of weeks ago. And it's my understanding that the county has routed it to their consultant and county council. And those comments back are, to, are back to Steve Smith. And so he's now um, preparing the comments to submit back to the city. 
So we're hopeful that uh, we're, again, we keep talking about nearing the finish line. Uh, it would be very helpful to, uh, to get this wrapped up, uh, as I do believe, and Mr. Moody, you can confirm this, is that we're looking at a potential annexation in March at LAFCO for uh, a piece of property. Okay. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. No. Okay. Irregardless, we want to get the master tax exchange agreement taken care of. It's been it's been a, a long project for us. I do want to touch uh, relationship to development impact fees. Uh, it's been reported in this chambers uh, that and other places that the uh, reduction that this council um, authorized in the development impact fees has definitely made an impact in interest in development. There are a few few things that uh, we need to take up in the in the future. One is um, some conversation with Sabufka in regards to, to fees that they're currently charging. Another is uh, discussions with the school district, uh, and that's just a matter of the vice mayor and I getting some dates to uh, the city manager so that we can get those um, discussions going. And in reality, for us as a council, is to review our growth policies. Uh, we need to bring that back forward. So uh, don't have a specific timeline of that, but that's uh, on, on a work program or a work list coming forward, along with just a review of our city priorities. Uh, I do want to um, take a moment. Uh, I think Council Member Espindola reached out and to acknowledge the work of the fire department and Chief Alexander in regard to some work they're doing for uh, I call it critical incident stress. Uh, some call it PTSD. There's a lot of different ac acronyms for it. But they are taking some fairly significant and important steps in dealing with, uh, with individuals who are in public safety who uh, are experience traumatic incidents and, and have um, and experience uh, difficulties. And uh, you know, it, it's something that that uh, used to be hidden, and it's it's something that is extremely valuable, uh, not only um, for the members who may be affected, but of course the families that they live with too. A um, couple other things, real quick, and actually three. There's there's three things that I think that uh, you know continue to be uh, top priority for the council, or in the top priority. One is economic development, and. Uh, you know, at this particular point in time, uh, Vice Mayor is working with uh, GSEC and the EDC to, uh, to work to align those efforts on, on our behalf of the city. But I also, uh, as each day goes by, there's more and more interest, I think, in uh, retention. Um, how, what are we doing to uh, retain businesses that we have in the city, especially under the stresses of COVID-19? So uh, an idea that... Uh, that I want to bring forward, it's going to take a little bit more effort to flesh out, is, is basically putting together a task force. And this task force well, goal would be to, to actually reach out to businesses on behalf of the city, not on behalf of any of the other agencies that are doing the same, but what are we doing as a city to reach out to our businesses to find out what it is that uh, they need from us or what we can do for them. Um, and so I'll be looking to establish that task force as well as staff that task force. Um, the other is, is when we've chatted about this, and I know Council Member Espindola and I have, have done some preliminary work on this, but that is, uh, and this ties into uh, Council Member Kirchner's comment of a minute ago, which is emergency planning. Um, I have a I have a belief that uh, you know we need to make sure that we're as on top of our game for emergency planning as a city uh, as we possibly can be. And uh, so at, at a not too distant future date, um, again, another, yet another ad hoc committee um, that will be uh, Council Member Espindola and myself beginning the process of uh, working with the city staff in regards to making sure that our emergency planning is getting the prioritization that it, that it needs to. And again, um, it ties in perfectly with the anniversary of of the the, uh, the dam incident. Long-winded for me tonight, but uh, I, I, I'm going to echo uh, the thanks, uh, the heartfelt thanks, and the extreme respect that I have for two individuals. First, uh, Shannon uh, Chaffin, our city attorney. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he answers a lot of our calls uh, at all times. Um, I recently have had, had 
uh, the opportunity to have to to call on Shannon for several several different things, and he's been uh, very accessible and very patient and. Uh, I think he's doing a wonderful job for the city, so I want to make sure and call him out for that. And of course, last but certainly not least, and uh, I know she hates this, but um, to our interim city manager, who's very, uh, who has been extremely instrumental in shepherding this city uh, through the last few years of with some stuff that no one ever dreamed um, that would be that we would be experiencing. So um, again. To both of you sitting up there, um, my, my deep appreciation, respect for your professionalism, um, your accessibility, and patience. And with that, I believe we're going to adjourn to closed session. And we will talk to you all after closed session.